Number 10. Neon and HF have approximately the same molecular masses. And then we have letter A. It says, explain why the boiling points of neon and HF differ. All right. So let's not even go into letter B. So let's just, let's just dive into letter A for right now. Then maybe from letter A, we can figure out what's going on with B. So explain why the boiling points of neon and HF differ. All right. So we have neon and we have HF. Now, neon is just an atom, right? So it's just a single, mo you know, a single atom that is a molecule. So I can't really draw anything here. If I want to, I could write the valence electrons, right? Neon would have a total of eight valence electrons because it's in uh, the noble gases. So it's got eight, it's got the octet, everything's beautiful. If I wanted to draw out HF, let's just do that right now. I have hydrogen on the left. I got fluorine on the right. Draw your Lewis uh, valence electrons around each one. So fluorine has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, this is kind of like a refresher. Hydrogen has one. Connect the dots and boom, there you go. So that's what the valence, the uh, Lewis structure will look like for HF. And neon is just chilling by itself. Now, these are both covalent because we're dealing with just nonmetals here. So from here, we can identify what types of intermolecular forces these atoms have, right? These, the molecule HF and neon. So intermolecular forces, if I just type in here, intermolecular forces, there are three basic types. So we'll do one, two, and three, and they get more specific as you go from top to bottom. The first intermolecular force is known by a lot of different names. You could know it as dispersion forces, van der Waals, London forces, induced dipole. I'm just going to put dispersion. So you have a dispersion force. The second one is a dipole. We'll say dipole, dipole, attraction or force, I guess. And then number three is the most specific is hydrogen bonding. Okay. So from this information, we could figure out uh, what intermolecular forces are present in neon and HF. Well, just know that for your dispersion forces, this is the least specific in which that all covalent molecules, it doesn't matter whether you're just one atom or whether you're, you know, two separate atoms, all of them will have dispersion forces. So neon would have a dispersion force. So dispersion force. And so will HF, dispersion force. Okay. Now, dipole-dipole attraction or dipole-dipole force only occurs of uh, polar molecules. And remember, polar molecules are the ones that are asymmetrical. So when I'm talking about polar molecules, I'm talking about asymmetrical. So, I mean, this is just a single neon. There's no really, you know, uh, other atom to put it up against. This would be a symmetrical. It's literally just one atom. So this would not have any dipole-dipole forces. But however, with HF, if I try to cut this bond right down the middle, I got a hydrogen on the left side and I got a fluorine on the right. Those are two totally different atoms. The molecule is not the same. It's asymmetrical, so it's polar. And thus, it would also have dipole-dipole attractions or dipole-dipole force. The last one is hydrogen bonding. Now for hydrogen bonding, this is the most specific force because only three uh, components can allow to have hydrogen bonding. And that's if you have a hydrogen that is either bound to a nitrogen or bound to an oxygen or bound to a fluorine. 
Since neon is just neon, I have no hydrogens. This would not have hydrogen bonding. But if I look at HF, I mean it's a hydrogen bound to fluorine. And since that's one of the classifications in order to have hydrogen bonding as your intermolecular force, this checks out. So actually HF has all three intermolecular forces. Little old neon just has the one dispersion force. This is why your boiling points are going to be very different. So it's due to those intermolecular forces. And just know that the more intermolecular forces, the higher the boiling point. So you could always rank these by their intermolecular forces. And since HF has, you know, all three of them, this is going to have a way higher boiling point. So increase boiling point. So for letter A, explain why the boiling points of neon is different. Because they have different IMFs. And IMFs are intermolecular forces. HF would have the highest boiling point, and neon, out of the two of them, would have the lower boiling point, even though they have the same molecular masses. Now, let's go on to letter B. So A is done. Letter B says, now let's compare the change in the boiling points of neon, argon, krypton, and xenon with the change of the boiling points of HF, HCl, HBr, and HI, and explain the difference between the changes with increasing atomic or molecular mass. All right, so let's do all of these single atoms. So they all fall in the same category as just a neon. These neon, argon, krypton, xenon, if I look at these on the periodic table, they're all in the same group. So they all are noble gases, they all have um, eight valence electrons. So we'll go neon, argon, krypton, and xenon. Now, if you want, you can fill in the eight you know, valence electrons. Let's just show that it's literally the same. Everything is the same. They're all noble gases, they all got eight. And since they are just the noble gases and they kind of act just like the neon did, all of these would have only uh, dispersion forces. There is no other force that would, you know, make neon or argon, krypton or xenon, you know, different from the others. But now how do we find out that change in boiling point? And we have to talk about it due to increasing atomic or molecular mass. If it's only coming down to dispersion forces, the only difference between these four is the molecular mass. So the rule of thumb here is that if you want the higher the boiling point, you would need a much higher molecular mass. And since they're, you know, just like we said, they're all dispersion forces, we have no dipole-dipole forces, no hydrogen bonding, the boiling point is strictly related to that molecular mass. So on the periodic table, if I look where neon, argon, krypton, and xenon are, neon has the smallest molecular mass and xenon has the largest. So the boiling point would be the lowest for neon, which would then come argon, which is smaller than krypton, which is less than xenon. This one would have the largest boiling point. I'll just put BP. And neon would have the smallest boiling point, which is BP. But now let's go about it in terms of HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. So let's see. HF, HBr... HCl, and HI. Now, we already did HF. HF, remember, has all three of the intermolecular forces, making HF have a huge boiling point. 
But now if I look at the other three, HBR, HCL, and HI, yes, they would all have dispersion forces because all molecules have dispersion. They would all have dipole-dipole forces because, just like if we paint the picture here, H on one side, BR on the other. That's not symmetrical. H on one side, CL on the other. That's not symmetrical. And H on one side, I on the other. That's not symmetrical. And any time that you have polar molecules, you will have dipole-dipole forces. So it's got that as well. But now let's look at that hydrogen bonding. Remember, hydrogen bonding is the most specific. You have to have an H that's either bond to an N, or bound to an O, or bound to an F. HF, just like we said, has the hydrogen bonding. But HBr doesn't fit in this category, HCl doesn't fit in this category, and HI doesn't fit in this category. So this one, all three of these would not have hydrogen bonding. So that's what sets apart the HF with the HBr, HCl and HI. So if we wanted to rank these, HF, since it has all three of these, HF would have the highest boiling point. And then since the other three have the same types of forces, then you rank them by molecular mass. So you only start ranking them by molecular mass if you can group together different compounds that have the same molecular forces. But if you have one more that's, you know, has one more intermolecular force, that one's going to have the highest boiling point. So if I could rearrange this, let's just see, because I'm kind of running out of room here. Let's see. Maybe I could drop it down here. So HF would actually have the highest boiling point. We'll put it on this side. And then just rank them in terms of um, molecular mass. Now, technically, I should put the HCl uh, over here and HBr over here uh, because chlorine has less mass than bromine. So then it would be HCl. HBr, and HI. HCl would have the lowest boiling point. Then comes HBr, then comes HI. And since HF has the one more intermolecular force, hydrogen bonding, it's got uh, the highest boiling point. So now let's see if we answer the question. It said, compare the change in the boiling points of neon, argon, krypton, and xenon, with the change of the boiling point in HF, HCl, HBr, and HI, and explain the difference between the changes with increasing atomic or molecular mass. So this one, the first one, remember, is purely going by molecular mass. But for the second one, the first three are only going by molecular mass, but then you have to add in the idea that more intermolecular forces, higher boiling point. And now we are done with that, and we're done with this question. What'd you think? Thank you so much for viewing the video. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, please hit the subscribe button uh, to help us out on the channel. Um, I'm so glad that we're giving you great educational content for you to study in chemistry, physics, and math. So go check the channel out to see what videos we put out and hopefully we can help you out. I will talk to you soon and have a great day. Okay, bye-bye.